Now we're live. Hey, everybody. Welcome to Your Music Sucks. I'm Brian Bowden. That is my good friend, Craig Gass from Howard Stern Show, 8 Miranda's Pussy on Sex and the City. How are you, Craig Gass? I'm doing good. I was watching the beginning of last week's episode, and you uh -huh. need uh, an Oscar for the way you portrayed your Chris Rock role, because you said last week, welcome to Your Music Sucks. I'm Brian Bowden. This is my friend, Craig Gass, who ate Miranda's Pussy, and I said, take Miranda's name out your fucking mouth and you went okay and i said take miranda's name out your fucking mouth and you nailed it perfectly you said okay i will, <laughs> I I mean, will. i'm gonna you fucking nailed i was so proud of you when i was watching it back i was like wow brian really fucking yes. nailed that line man I know. And and to see how good I nailed that line and to know how much money I've cost people on the sets uh of film projects. <laughs> you forget do you forget lines on the set? I don't just forget lines, I forget cues. I'm like a fucking goldfish. Really? It's like if yeah, I filmed this uh web series called I'll Call You. And uh, the first day, I was really nervous, so I forgot a lot of my shit. And the, the scene was me driving a car. So I had to drive a car and remember lines, and I was just fucking it all up. Then uh, the third and fourth day, it was a bar scene, and it was a big party scene, and my character was a big party guy. So I was in my element. So the first day, I was nervous. Second day, I didn't shoot. Third and fourth day, I was fucking rolling, zip soaring. And it was fucking great. And then the fourth and fifth day, I was just, I was on fire with that too. Once I loosened up, I was good. But I think I was so tense trying to remember the lines. I just kept forgetting them. And then not, and then knowing that it doesn't need to be meticulous. It just needs to be the line. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I remember I had a speech uh, in the first day of filming for a new TV show that Julia Roberts had. For, I think it was Julia Roberts was the producer of. And I was filming scenes with this very attractive actress who was the female lead in uh, Jungle Fever, the girl who falls in love with, is it Wesley Snipes? Is Wesley Snipes the guy in Jungle Fever? Yes. Yes, and he is. Whoever the Italian girl was that he falls in love with was the girl that I was doing my scenes with. And it was a courtroom drama where I played a lawyer who... Uh, had sock puppets and i would act out uh scenes with sock puppets in the courtroom it was a really weird character i didn't pay attention to the to studying for that role at all for for whatever reason every every time i've ever been on camera i would always get hyper aware of what my material was and really like memorize it commit it to memory but for that thing i i can't remember what was going on in my life at the time i showed up completely unprepared and the director screamed at me on the set. Ooh, was he <laughs> mad? He barked out so much that he made the actress jump. She was like, like he he went, God damn it! Like he was. Yeah. Uh, see, I wouldn't be able to handle that shit. I'm not good with shit like that. Dude, I'm not I, good with fucking like being under pressure. That's like, listen, you're fucking this all up. You're costing time, money. We need to take five minute break. We need to get back on track now. Go be that happy guy in the corner over there. <laughs> it's like, oh, I can't. A hundred percent. I have had I have had moments in my life where somebody got shitty with me. And I thought, you know what? If you would just approach me with like some sensitivity and some love, you, you'll get exactly what you want out of this. But, oh, man, yelling. I don't react well to yelling. I do not. I don't either. I'm not good. With, I'm not good with that shit. I'm not good with negativity. By the way, I got to tell you, man, I've been seeing a lot of takes on the Will Smith slap. And I saw, I heard a really interesting one from Dana Carvey and uh, David Spade. And they were both talking about how for both of them, they said there was something about his arrogance, the way he slapped him, turned around and just like had this cocky swagger walking back to his seat. The fact that he was so much bigger than Chris, both of them said it, it genuinely brought up memories, triggered these awful memories of bullies uh mm -hmm. growing up and uh and how it, it really fucked them up and i was always somebody who bullies wanted to would get too close to wanting to beat me up and then i would somehow diffuse it by saying something funny i would get out of i got out of a lot of beatings i would push people and push people and push people until they wanted to fucking kill me and then 
and then I would somehow diffuse it by being funny and and save myself from beating. But did you ever have any like? Did you, have, did you ever have issues with bullies growing up? Yeah, that's why I'm a comic, man. That's why I <laughs> like bullying. Uh, so I learned at an early age to put the joke on the bully. Mm. So whenever they would make fun of me, uh, I would just fire back. But the thing is, I could fire back with so much more. You can only say I'm fat so many times. Like, it gets yeah. old. But when I'm talking about you and your mother and your brother and your whole family, I'm hitting you in the core, you know, like even at an early age, because back then in living color was big on doing the your mama jokes. Yeah. So I would I would just take your mama out of it and just make it about the person. So it looked like I had all this shit in the chamber. But really, I was just memorizing stuff that I saw on TV and just firing at people. Wow. Dude, you know, and that's kind of diffused. Yeah. You know what I was really shocked by? All comedians almost across the board are like, what the fuck? This is going to set a bad precedent. I think Tom Segura is absolutely accurate in being angry and saying, fuck that guy. Fuck that cuck bitch is what he's been repeating. Over yeah. the um, I think it's absolutely accurate because uh, it, there is a tremendous amount of entitlement that was behind all that shit. But of all the people in comedy, Tiffany Haddish who I don't, I'm not that familiar with. I've never worked with her before. I don't even think I've even run into her at a comedy club, which is rare. Um, Cause we always see each other. Comics always see each other everywhere. She actually said that, and this is like right at the end of the Oscars, she showed up at an Oscar party. What'd you think about the slap? And she was like, me, I thought like, she tried to put a positive spin on it and said, I, I, I thought that chivalry was dead. And I, 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 I love that Will Smith show that there are still men out there who will stick up for their wives. What? That's what people are saying. I don't get this whole defending my family argument. What the fuck are you defending? Number one, I still think it's fake. For the, I st there's no way this is real life. <laughs> like, I just refuse to believe this is real life. I refuse to believe that Will Smith walked up, smacked Chris Rock, and sat back down. Then I refuse to believe that people are backing Will Smith. And then I refuse to believe the fact that, do you know that, I guess this statement that came out, <coughs> that Jada Pinkett said that Will Smith was, that he went overboard, that she thought he went a little too overboard at the Oscars. I haven't heard that, so I'm suspicious of whether or not that's real. I saw that, I saw that real quick today. But, oh, really? again, I, I still want to see, I want to see what happens to Will Smith. Uh, I want to see what happens to Will Smith and that like I it's crazy. Well, the first thing is I refuse he, to believe it's true. He's stepping down uh, from the Academy. He, they announced that. But if it wasn't true, what would be the reason for doing like what, what would be the gain for doing it? Hey, it like, I don't know. Clearly, it's it's some mental health shit going on. But I don't know the whole protecting my family thing. I don't understand that. I don't understand people backing that. I don't I, like there's nothing to gain from this. I don't know. I don't know. I just. I refuse to believe it. I, I only, can't wrap my head around it. <laughs> I only understand the the argument for protect your family because there are a lot of people who don't understand shit. So it doesn't surprise me that there are people taking the wrong side of it, which is why the entire incident annoyed me from the very beginning because I thought, holy shit, there's going to be too large of a percentage, even if it's 1%. 1% of the billions of people on planet Earth that watch that slap, if it's only 1% of them that thought, yeah, man, good for him, it sets a terrible precedent for comedy yeah. going forward. Just just 1%. And I know that there's, you know, in the middle of the pandemic, we couldn't get everybody on the same page. Or people who thought the pandemic was fake, they thought that, uh, you know, they believed in uh, whatever that um, first... Uh, um, wave of medicine they thought that that Trump said was going to be the cure all for it, and he's like, I chloroquine, yeah, Col hydrochloroquine, yeah, I was hydrochloroquine, to, yeah, hydrochloroquine is is the way to beat COVID, and yeah, why aren't we talking about hydrochloroquine? And it's like, or hydroxychloroquine, and and uh, we couldn't get on the same page about that. So I knew that there'd be a percentage of people who wouldn't understand how to process what had happened. It's just a line that should never be crossed, and it, and the the joke was so goddamn innocuous. And then to say, well, they should have known she had alopecia. Well, what about the fact that 
Uh, Chris Rock said in an interview on Howard Stern that he has, uh, um, he's almost on the spectrum in his nonverbal communication. He has, he has issues himself with communication. So why aren't people saying you got to think about Chris's affliction too? I mean, it, the whole thing is, is silly because it just comes down to the fact that Will Smith got up on stage for a joke that he laughed at and then decided, oh shit, I better get up and do something. And it's a line that should never be crossed. Nobody should ever get on stage and try to physically interfere with the show, which has been happening for the last couple of years. You start. Yeah, that's why I can't wrap my head around it because he laughed at the joke. Mm -hmm. A laughter is a reaction. It's the only thing that you, it's a reaction. It's a reaction to a thing. You cannot force a laugh. If somebody genuinely laughs, you made them laugh. You right. can't force it. That was not a forced laugh. He laughed. And then right. he consciously got up and hit him. And that is the part that I can't wrap my head around. That you consciously stop laughing to get up to hit a person. And there are people saying you're defending your family. Look, whether you think you're defending your family or not, motherfucker just laughed at the goddamn joke he's hitting Chris Rock in the face for. So what the fuck is it? Yeah, I don't know. It's... it's um, uh... It is a really weird thing, but I have been talking to some people who thought it was fake, and uh, and I just ask them like, "Well, what do you think?" It's there, there's a girl um, on Facebook that I know. She used to be a waitress at a comedy club that I started at, and she said, I, "I think it was fake, and they did it to boost the Oscars rating." And I said, "It was three quarters of the way through the show. How are they going to boot? Like, how how was enough people going to find out in that last half hour that the Oscars were on? Like." That makes no sense. Like, there's there's no strong argument for it being fake. But I do understand that it is such an absurd action. It was such an over-the-top, what the fuck, that some people just can't wrap their head around it actually happening. I get that. Yeah, and it's not like he was laying into the Smith family. Yeah, yeah. It's not like it was, here's a Will Smith joke. Here's a Will Smith joke. Here's a Jade Pickett Smith joke. Here's a Jade Pickett Smith joke. Here's a Will Smith joke. It yeah. wasn't any of that. It was a fucking tag. It was yeah. a quick fucking in and out that lasted two fucking seconds. Right. And because of that, it would have been done. It would have been done. done. Right after, and then you can talk to the guy after the show. Right after saying that Javier Bardem is praying to God that Will Smith wins an Oscar so he doesn't have to be the one person in the car with his girl that won the Oscar because him and his girl were nominated for an Oscar that night. And um, and then he looks over at Jada, makes that joke, and then moves on to do the presentation. And then Will Smith gets on. Yeah, it's it's a bizarre thing, man. It's it's going to be around for a. It'll be around for the rest of our lives. It's such a cultural moment, such a pop culture moment. And I personally hope they take his Oscar away because it it needs to be. He has to be made an example of. Have you heard Rock's families, by, by the way? He's got, you know, Tony. I heard Tony Rock go, go did crazy. You, did you and I hang out with Tony in Florida? Was that you that came with me to Florida? Yeah. Okay. And then Tony had, he had the, Tony let me get on stage at his show, um, like a couple nights before my show. And then um, Tony's always been cool, but apparently Chris has a younger brother who is furious and just, you know, he's like, get let me get along with Will. Uh, he's not even a comic. He's just just some. And you know what? Chris Rock is just playing this beautifully. He's not saying anything. He's not doing anything. <laughs> he's letting everybody else do it for him. Fuck, great. I'm Good gonna on see, Chris Rock. I'm gonna see him. And in... you know what's funny? This is the this is the best part about all this shit. This is the best part about all this shit. Uh, Chris Rock put out a tweet. He said, uh, "I'm okay. My gums broke the broke the fall or something like that." Like he made a joke about his gums breaking the hit, or the gums took the hit. Yeah. Uh, and then underneath that tweet is a tweet from like August that just says, if you're sick and suck on boobies, it's called I boob profen or something like that. <laughs> like it's an I boob profen joke. It's another corny <laughs> joke. It's, the, it's such a fucking, it's one of those jokes where it's like, like if I made that joke, everybody would fucking hate, like. It's it's very very funny. I want to find it. I want to read it verbatim because it's fucking beautiful. It's really it's on the level of the joke that that got Will Smith so upset. But yeah, it's it's just a bizarre 
fucking thing. I you can't understand how something like that happens, but this is your music sucks. The whole point of your music sucks is that me and Brian are best friends. I'm sorry, time. Craig. I know we're 15 minutes in, but I got a bit we got to do. We talked got, about a thing last week. I did want to bring up one other thing, which is like I talked to you on the phone a couple of days ago. If you don't know anything about Brian, there's one thing. Well, there's a lot of things to love about Brian. One of the things I love about Brian is that he is a diehard fan of a team that not many people are a fan of. He is a a just uh ride or die like to his grave for the Miami Dolphins. He's the biggest Miami Dolphins fan on the planet. Arguably one of the biggest fans of any sporting team on the planet. Uh that you, any fan you've ever met. And there's a rumor that came out that Tom Brady might end up going to the Dolphins, which I was so happy to hear. And I told Brian if if Tom Brady goes to your team, I I will be rooting for, I'll be watching your games every Sunday. And Brian, I couldn't believe, I didn't even understand what you were saying. You said, fuck Tom Brady. And if Tom Brady comes, it's going to suck. And I said, but what if he wins the Super Bowl? And you said, yeah, that'll be one year. And I was like, what? <laughs> Explain to me why you don't want Tom Brady to come to your It's not team. that I don't want Tom Brady. Listen, it's not that I don't want, look, Tom Brady, if there's a blemish in Tom Brady, Brady's career, it's his stats in Miami. <laughs> and if you look really? at, yeah, if you go look at all of his stats in every single stadium, like granted, he still has great stats in Miami. Yeah. But it is like a little blemish on the career. So I feel like Tom Brady is looking at Miami like we look at the, the guy in the front row that has his arms crossed. Like, what the fuck do I got to do? Right. So anyway, that's not that I just, I'm at the point with the Miami Dolphins where I do not give a fuck what the Dolphins do in the offseason. I am tuned out. There's so much shit that goes on with the Dolphins that I just cannot follow it between coaches getting fired and rehired. And then the coach that they brought in has this beautiful fucking video montage of him acting like a psychopath. It is I like I just tune out. I tune out the offseason. But then when I found out Tom Brady might go to the Dolphins. I said, you know what would be funny? If I got a Tom Brady custom jersey for the Miami Dolphins. And I could be the first one to have it. I'll get it before he even signs with the fucking team. And I went on the fucking pro shop where you can get custom jerseys. And I tried to get a Tom Brady jersey. And I couldn't. They block out the D in Brady. Look, at, I got Tom. I sent Tom pitch. Look, see how they blocked out the, the D in Brady? It says Bracey. You yeah. cannot get a Tom Brady 12 jersey in Miami. You can't do it. But you know what you can get uh, for a custom jersey? You can um, get this, Craig. You can get fucking Cockman. You can get Cockman. You can get Cockman 12. You know what else you can get, Craig? You know what else you can get? You can get Rape Fest. You can get Rape Fest on a jersey, Craig. You know what else? You know what else you can get, Craig? You can get Cunty. You can get Cunty on a jersey. You cannot no, get Brady. But you, can get, you can get his cousin Cunty. You know what else you can get, Craig? You know, you can get cunt face. Just in case cunty might be somebody's name, I want to make you sure that is that this is fucking cunt face that you can get. And you can also get, uh, what is that, Brady sucks. You can get Brady sucks. You can get Brady sucks on a jersey, but you cannot get Brady, right? There's no, what else do we got? Juke killer. You can get the juke killer on a jersey. You want the juke killer on your team? You want to be d defensive tackle? Fucking uh, did you go? What is it? I can't even read that one. What is all oh, the Ku Klux Klan? <laughs> just, just in case Jew killer wasn't on the nose enough, and then Jesus. and then pedophile, <laughs> just straight up pedophile. <laughs> you can get all that, and yeah. And I thought about you, Craig. I said Craig needs a custom jersey from the Seahawks, and so yeah. I put this. Look what you can get. You can get this, Craig. You can get Horsecock 69. <laughs> but you cannot get a Tom Brady jersey. You can't get Brady. You can't get Brady. You can't get Brady 12. You wow. cannot. They won't let you do it. No, you can get Horsecock, but you cannot get Tom Brady. You cannot get Brady. So even if your name is Brady, you're fucked. They fucked all the Brady's out there. But Tommy Horsecock is A OK. I cannot. And Joey Juke, Joey Juke Killer. 
I cannot believe how much time you put into that. I know Brian is the kind of person that whoever we've been making fun of that day and we go to uh, Starbucks and they go, what's the name for the order? Brian will yell out the name of the person we've been making fun of all day that day. Like that's that is hilarious that you did that. Holy shit. Well, Brian, this is uh, your music sucks. We are best friends. We love each other, but we just yes, don't see eye -to -eye on music. We just <laughs> don't understand each other's music. And so once a week, we send each other one of our favorite songs, and the other person criticizes it and um, or critiques it, goes through it, and sometimes we learn something about our music being awful. So I sent you a Scorpion song, and you sent me a Red Man song. Do you want to go first? You want me to right. go first, Brian? Why don't you yeah. go first? Yeah, I All sent right. you Time for Some Action by Red Man. Time for Some Action by Red Man. And uh, I got a dumb guy question. Red Man's one of the uh, Wu-Tang Clan, right? No, he is not. He's really? Not in the Wu Tang Clan. No, he's Red friends Man. with the Wu Tang Clan. No, he's not in the Wu Tang Clan. Is Method Man in the Wu Tang Clan? Method Man is in the Wu Tang Clan. And isn't Method Man and Red Man friends? Yeah, they're buddies. They have albums together. Okay. Uh, they were in, they were in How High. Okay, I was gonna say I thought they I thought that Red Man was in there because of that connection. All right, so. So the song is called Time for Some Action. And um, uh, I'm listening to it. It starts out. Do you, do you know what made me laugh out loud about this song right off the jump? What did? What? It starts out 1990 motherfucking two. And I was yeah, like, it did. Oh, no. Every comedian knows you don't want to put a timestamp on shit on your stand-up comedy because 10 years from now it'll be dated they all you know comics are always advising other comics if you're going to record an album if you're going to put out a special make sure that it's something that will stand up 10 years from now or 20 years from now you want it to be evergreen so you don't want to do stuff about current events that are going on you want to you want to avoid shit like that so when he starts out with 1990 motherfucking tale, i was like oh no but you know what we're oh. going the, the song kicks in. 30 years ago, brother. <laughs> wow. Holy shit, you're right. 30 years ago. By the way, you know what else happened 30 years ago? St like this Sunday, 30 years ago, Sam Kinison's been dead for exactly 30 years as of this Sunday, which is crazy. No and that's shit. when this song, this song came out. So besides 1992, it started out bad. Like that 1992 made me laugh so hard i was not ready to open my mind to the rest of whatever was going to happen i just kept rewinding that to make sure i heard it right and then the song actually picks up the um that whole time for some action thing it's it's so catchy that time for some action it actually made me and i don't know why i felt like fighting somebody i felt like and i right I don't, Get I don't, up. i've never beat anyone up in my life in fact, I've tried to avoid fights forever. That's been a big goal of mine is to avoid fights with anyone. This song made me want to fight somebody. I actually felt like, like I just, I felt like pumped up about it. And then once you get past that initial hump of that hilarious 1990 motherfucking two, which he references a couple times in the song, like, why are oh, you yeah. It's 92. Like, no, it's not. It's That it's happens a lot in hip-hop. Hip-hop has a lot of times. Like, you know exactly what song comes out when in hip-hop a lot of times. Well, the lyrics start to... I mean, the lyrics are really original. Lights, camera, cock, buck the... Wait, cock back the hammer straight from the land of the lost. I'll hit you with the funk force that'll make you rap style back to the crack aisle, brother, then strike a pose like Madonna. My mom's kicked me out because I did what I want to. I mean, it was just, it was really original. And that chorus of just constantly saying time for some action, time for some, I just, I got into it. I liked it. It started, nice. if it wasn't for 1990 motherfucking two, I would give it a four but I'm going to give it a three and a half. I really like the song. There's not much else I can really add to it. it it's a great song. The rhyme scheme is really original. And um, uh, I admired him for that. But uh, Redman, if you're out there, uh, I liked your song. I just, you lost me at night. I tell you what, if you like this, you you will probably be a Redman fan. Because his lyrics, he's probably, he's, 
one of the best lyricists of all time. Like he's he's great, and he's fuck, and he has some great references, and he's fucking hilarious, and, yeah, and he's I mean, delightful. I met him one time; he was very delightful. Brian Bowden, Red Man, same room is exactly what you think it would be. Just really? a delightful man. Yeah, and it was funny during he was doing a show at this uh, this place that I do comedy at Tetra Hydra Club, which is a big marijuana social club. Yeah. And uh, he's on stage, he's introducing his whole crew. And he did an episode of Cribs, and on an episode of Cribs, there was a dude just laying on the couch. All right, this guy Mike, like whatever his name was, Mike, laying on the couch. Yeah. And uh, and he's doing the show. He's like, and this is my boy Mike, right? And people just clap. He goes, Oh wait, no. This is the dude from, remember when I was on Cribs and the dude was laying on the couch? This is the motherfucker on the couch. And the thing got the big, it got a bigger pop than when Red Man came on stage. It was fucking unbelievable. It was like people were just praising this dude on the couch. No. Anyway. Yeah, it, you sent me. What? Hold on a second. Wasn't that the legendary episode of Cribs where uh, Red Man's place was a shithole? Was that, is that his, his <laughs> Yeah, he just looked like in a regular apartment. Yeah, it was like a regular. <laughs> like, the, like the doorbell still had the wires. Like, you want to ring the doorbell, you just got to rub these wires. <laughs> I remember hearing about go. that. He goes, and now I'm going to show you the safe, and it's just a shoebox full of money. <laughs> that is hilarious. Yeah, man. Yeah, it was everything you wanted it to be. I sent you that Scorpion song, and as far as this genre of music, hard rock and heavy metal, Blackout is considered a classic. Had you ever heard the song Blackout before? I've never heard Blackout before. No. All right. What did this you is think? a this oh. is new for me. Uh, so it starts out like every song that I've ever heard from the genre. Uh, goes into the you know hits that fucking guitar and then he starts to sing and he's like I realized day. I missed the day, but I'm too wrecked to care anyway. And and I listened to the rest of the song, and then he said, I blacked out, I blacked out, I blacked out, I blacked out. A lot of redundancy at the end about blacking out. And I'm like, I think this song's about blacking out drunk. <laughs> then I went back and listened to it again. And the first verse, I realized when I missed a day, I'm too wrecked to care anyway. I look around and see his face. What the hell if I lost my taste? I don't want to find out. And I'm like, this dude get blacked out drunk and fuck another dude? And then that's all I thought about the rest of this fucking song. <laughs> you know what? <laughs> it's a good point. It's it's like, I've lost my taste. And then there's another thing. And there's another line where he goes, last thing I recall, I got lost inside a deep black hole. Okay. Now, if that ain't a black hole in a, in a blackout, drunk, gay sex, act, I don't know what is. Um I don't know if that, but then I'm thinking maybe that's exactly what this song's about. And Craig's going to be like, so do you know what this song's about? And I was going to say a blackout, but is this about a dude that got blackout drunk and had sex with a man? Is that what this song's about? Here, I'm going to tell you something crazy. I've never paid attention to the lyrics, but as you were reading the lyrics to me, I was like, oh shit, I think this is about a guy getting fucked in the ass. <laughs> I didn't even think about right? it. Right? It's, never it's thought literally it. about getting fucked in the ass. Yeah. I got lost in the deep black hole. I don't want to find out. I just want to cut it out. Oh my god. Um, but that, but the, wow. but those are the lyrics. Like the lyrics are basically, "Hey, I may or may not yeah. have had sex with a man." Blackout. Yeah. I got blackout, and here's a guitar solo. Wow. So, I never even thought about it. Yeah, you're right. You're absolutely right. I never thought about it. But on a scale of one to five, what did you think of the song? I mean, I'll give it a solid three just for the gay stuff. Uh, <laughs> I was like musically, I was gonna give it like a two because it just it just sounds very stereotypical to the genre. You know what? We got we got to get Tom to do some real homework and get Tom to cut through all the episodes and just splice together moments where you're like, I was gonna give it a three, but I'm giving it a three and a half because of the gay stuff. Like, <laughs> how many times the gay stuff, quote unquote, made you give it a bait a better rating? Than what you were gonna get because it had some gay stuff in it and it tickled. I don't know. I have it with Judas Priest. I have it with the fucking Scorpion. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that is hilarious. All right, so a solid three for Blackout by the Scorpion. Solid three. <laughs> I sent it to you because I just saw the Scorpions do uh, one of their nights of their residency shows. Skid Row opened up the show, and uh, I hadn't heard that song in a long time. I was not the biggest Scorpions fan in the world. I was going more to see Skid Row than anything else. And uh, and when that song started, I was like, man, this really brings back some memories. And I was like, this is actually a good song. Like for that genre of music, it's 
it really is it's a classic so i love that song man where do people find you brian go to illinoiscockburn.com illinoiscockburn.com exactly as it sounds i will be doing mm -hmm. roast of steve miggs up in seattle for kisw next friday the 15th of April. Tax day, April 15th. I think they moved it to the Monday, the 18th, I think, for some reason. But I'll How be many there. Will Smith slapped in the face jokes do you think are going to happen at the roast? That's a good question because we're going to have a guy from the Seahawks, uh, Walter Jones, uh, NFL Hall of Famer, former Seattle Seahawk. And my guess is people are going to direct some Will Smith jokes at him. I uh, I think I'm the only comic on the bill. I don't think there's any other comics. Everybody else is uh, from the radio station, uh, from the Seahawks, or from local. Oh, then they're all going to do it. They're all going to do it. Probably. Probably. And then next week, I have a big, <laughs> a big announcement about a tour and about some other big stuff that uh, that you'll be hearing about before we get to next week's episode. But I'm excited to announce the all tour. Right. So... And we're going to do some shows together, Brian. So I'm looking forward to that. Cannot wait. I love you, man. I will see you soon. And uh, your music didn't suck this week. Yeah, your music sucked. Your music was very. It didn't suck. It was gay. Your music was gay. It was gay. <laughs> and the gay parts made you happy. The gay parts made yeah. you laugh, Brian. <laughs> I'm in a deep black hole, and I just want to cut it out. <laughs>